Hey, 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 how you doing, everybody? It's me, Steve, the Surly Elf. Actually, no, I'm Finnegan, the Irish Elf. Actually, no, I'm just Brian, your favorite host of your favorite show, History Quest. And we've got a special treat for you this month. I've got a touching Christmas story for you. I've got a special guest, some museum news, and the once-in-a-lifetime chance for you to watch me dressed like Buddy the Elf. So why don't you sit tight and we'll get on with our story. <laughs> It's a funny thing, believing in a child's fantasy. There's no easy way to put it, but I'm an adult man, and I can honestly say, without a doubt in my mind, that jolly old Saint Nicholas is as real as the year is long. How can an adult still believe in Santa, you ask? Well, the answer is quite simple. You see, I know him personally, and I have to say that he's quite a remarkable person. I didn't always believe in Santa, I mean to say that I did, but then I didn't, and now I do again. Like most kids, my holidays revolved around Christmas morning and the thought of a seemingly endless pile of gifts stacked under a brightly decorated tree. I'd spend weeks crafting a list and then sending that list to the North Pole in hopes that it would pass along to the jolly old elf himself. Around the age of eight or nine, however, something began to change. I couldn't put my finger on it. But the thought of Santa as a real person began to feel foolish. How could he do all the things he was purported to do in just one night? Well, needless to say, my disbelief resulted in no gifts from Santa that year. But luckily, I did get a few more from Mom and Dad than what I normally would. From that point on, until most recently, Christmas was merely a holiday for faith and family and the excitement of Santa Claus on Christmas Eve became merely a thing of childhood memories. That was until I met a man who knew him personally. I began working in Hutchinson just a few years back. By then, I was a fully grown adult with a child of my own. He, like me, has grown up with all the joys that a child deserves at Christmas time. Shortly after taking my new position, I met a local man named George. Do you know him? He's quite the character. George had been around Hutch, and uh, we call it Hutch to save our breath for more important parts of the conversation. But at any rate, George had been around Hutch his whole life. People around town knew him, and still know him. They know him for his good humor, as well as his love for the community, and his keen skill at theater. Well, anyway, one day, George came to my work, started to tell a story about Santa Claus. It seems some years ago, Santa Claus would come to Hutchinson, go on KDUZ, the uh, local radio station, and talk to the children who so eagerly waited to hear his voice over the phone. With George's help, Santa was able to learn the names of all the kids who called KDUZ and discover what it was they wanted for Christmas. Of all the kids who called KDUZ, there was one little boy who stood out above all the others. His name was Raymond Tierstig III. Raymond was a unique little boy, and you'd be hard pressed to find a happier looking child. He possessed a unique twinkle in his eyes, and he had an infectious smile that could just spread around a room so easily. Raymond was in first grade, and he went to St. Anastasia's Elementary School. His teacher was Miss Cogley. That year, Miss Cogley decided to have her students write letters to Santa. Now, as you might have guessed, the kids from Miss Cogley's class were delighted and asked for all sorts of presents from old Saint Nick. Many of them wanted more than just one. When the letters were finished, they were given to George, and George brought them all the way to the North Pole and delivered them to Santa's desk. Santa read all the letters, of course, but of all the letters that he read that year, there was one that stood out for him. Instead of asking for several presents, one letter simply read, Dear Santa, I will leave milk and cookies for you. I have been good all the time. I would like a race car, 
and that's it. Love, Raymond. That's right. The letter came from little Raymond, and Santa knew right away that he had a touch of the Christmas spirit. As Christmas drew near, Santa made his annual visit to KDUZ. He did so so the kids in Hutchinson could call him and talk to him personally on the radio. Would you have guessed it? One of the callers was Raymond. Santa knew right away who it was and was overjoyed to hear little Raymond's voice. Is there someone on the line there waiting to talk to Santa? Merry Christmas. I hear something there. Uh, I know. Is this Raymond? Yeah. Raymond Tiersig? Yeah. Hey, Raymond, how are you doing, buddy? Good. <laughs> and now, Raymond, you're six years old this year? Yeah. And do you know who you're talking to? Yes, Santa. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's so good to hear your voice. And what would you like for Christmas? Can you tell old Santa Claus? A big puzzle. A big puzzle. Okay, do you like puzzles? Yes. Okay, you know, Santa used to work in the puzzle factory, but I had to quit working there. I had to quit working. Do you know why I had to quit working at the in the puzzle factory? No. Well, one day I just felt myself going to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I leave the puzzle making to the little elves now. Well, Raymond, um, what grade are you in school? Can you tell Santa? First grade. And who's your teacher? Miss Cogley. Oh, and does she ever do the turtle for you? Has she done the turtle for you? Yeah. And what does she do? What does it look like when she does the turtle? Can you tell old Santa Claus? I don't know. Oh. Yeah. Can you forget it? Okay, that's okay. Well, when you go to school on Monday, you tell uh, Mrs. Co Miss Cogley. I always marry her off. I always say Mrs. It's Miss Cogley because she's a good friend of Santa's. And you just ask her about maybe doing the turtle sometime. Boy, that would be a lot of fun to see that. That's right. Well, listen, uh, is there anything else you'd like for Christmas, Raymond? There is. Okay, what would you like? Anything else? You want a puzzle? A super giant puzzle. A super giant puzzle. Oh, 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 oh. With millions of pieces, huh? Yes. All cut the, all cut the same way. <laughs> well, I'll see what I can do. Okay, you sound like you're a very nice young man. Study hard in school, okay? Okay. Okay, you know Santa Claus was in the sixth grade for a number of times. <laughs> and it's hard to get out of that grade for me, but I liked it. I liked the teacher. But we all have to move on. That's right. Merry Christmas to you, Raymond. Bye-bye now. Oh, there he goes, dreaming Bye. about that big puzzle. Bye. You could just hear the excitement and the wonderment in Raymond's voice. It was a great reminder, even for Santa Claus, of what Christmas was truly about. Well, Christmas came and Christmas went. Santa visited homes all over the world on Christmas Eve, and he brought Christmas cheer everywhere he went. Then, when the season was over, Santa returned home to start preparing for next Christmas. Meanwhile, in Hutchinson, our friend George went back to his routine around town. If you didn't know, in addition to being one of Santa's helpers, George is also a clown who spreads humor all over town. One day, George received a call from Raymond's teacher. At first, he was afraid that maybe Santa did something wrong. But instead, Miss Cogley was calling for Raymond's parents. They just wanted George to thank Santa for giving Raymond a very special Christmas. She also said that every day Raymond came into class and asked her to do the turtle. And she obliged every time he asked. Oh, um, in case you're wondering, the turtle means that Miss Cogley would get on her back, put her hands and feet in the air, and rock back and forth like an upside down turtle. Another week passed and George's phone rang again. It was Miss Cogley, but this time she had some heartbreaking news for George to pass along to Santa. I guess a few nights earlier, Raymond crawled up into his dad's lap and he went to heaven. George was stunned. Those kinds of things aren't supposed to happen to little kids, especially kids like Raymond, and especially at Christmas time. Well, George passed the news along to Santa and the two of them decided they had to do something for the family. The visitation was the next day, so they had to act fast. 
they decided to make a wreath, a special wreath, one that would help people remember Raymond for his kindness and his joyous spirit. With a little help from St. Nick, George went straight to work. He took the letter that Raymond wrote to Santa and had it laminated. Next, he went to a shop in Hutchinson, Crow River Floral, and found an artificial but very lifelike wreath. Then, he went to the village shop. He asked Joe, the owner, if she could help him and Santa collect some items for the wreath. Together, they found a race car, a cookies and milk Christmas ornament, and a large puzzle piece that could be stretched around the entire wreath. You have to see it to believe it. Next, George found a little cherub and a little Santa Claus ornament. All the items were placed on the wreath with an angel on top and Santa on the bottom, and even Raymond's laminated letter was added. That night, George couldn't sleep. He thought the wreath needed one more thing, and then it came to him, a turtle! The next morning, he put a little turtle on the wreath. On the next day, George went to St. Anastasia's church for the visit. Unfortunately, Santa couldn't make it. But that's okay. George went in his place. George had never met Raymond before. He had never seen him and didn't know the family. Gathered around his resting place were flowers, family, and friends, and others who wanted to see Raymond one last time. George saw Miss Cogley and said hi. He then went up to Raymond to make sure the wreath was there, which it was. George didn't stay long though. He just glanced at Raymond and noted that he sure looked like a nice little boy. George was sure he never knew the Tierstig family, but as luck would have it, he did know Raymond's mom. In fact, he was well acquainted with her. It made the loss of Raymond even more heartbreaking, as no one should have to bear the loss of a little boy who touched so many people's lives. Even Santa could attest that Raymond's joy was so much it was contagious and it infected everybody around him. Some time went by. Santa kept on making toys at the North Pole and George kept on making people laugh in Hutchinson. As you might say, the world just kept on turning. Then one day, George noticed there was a package on his back step. He thought it was odd. The post office doesn't deliver packages back there, but lo and behold, there was a rectangular box. He brought the box in the house and opened it up. On top was a letter and before he reached in to see what else was there, he read the letter. It was from Raymond's mother, and she was thanking George for what he and Santa had done for Raymond and for her. The letter also said that inside the box was a stuffed bunny. She said the bunny was special as it belonged to Raymond. It was his nighttime buddy, and his favorite one at that. In a twist of fate, it turned out that Raymond named the bunny George. He never knew Santa's helper, George, and George never knew Raymond, but I guess sometimes fate just works in mysterious ways. Well, Raymond's mom felt that the bunny would be in good hands and that George should have it. A more poetic and heartfelt Christmas gift there may never be. Well, that's the story of George, Raymond, and Santa. Some would call it the story of Santa and the Little Angel. For me, when George told me that story, I couldn't help but feel it pull at the old heartstrings. I never knew Raymond, but his story was certainly one that made me feel how special Christmas is for a little boy or for a little girl, especially when it comes to something as pure and simple as a visit or a chat with Santa Claus. Well, I still wasn't so sure about how George knew Santa. After all, it's a big claim for a grown adult to say that they are a personal friend of the jolly old elf. As luck would have it, George had just the right way to prove to me that Santa is as real as the day is long. While he told me Raymond's story, I was reminded that while some would say he's a myth, for one little boy, Santa was as real as Christmas itself. Now, I can't say that I ever saw George and Santa together but as I listened, I knew he was telling the truth. After all, when someone has a twinkle in their eye and joy in their laugh, you just can't help 
but believe what they have to say, especially when they talk about the true meaning of Christmas. On a serious note, I, I've got to say that was one of my favorite stories I've ever written. It was also a very hard story to write, um, not just to capture the, the emotion of it, but uh, just for the contents of what happened. It was a, it was a hard story to write, um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm glad I wrote it because there really was a message there and uh, kind of a message of innocence and of just how special it is to be a little kid at Christmas time. And I think that's, uh, at least for me, with, with a kid of my own, that's what you're always trying to capture every year in December. And, um, but at any rate, that was our story. And as I promised before, we have a special guest, and that is Santa Claus himself. Wow! Merry Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas! Oh, 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 oh. oh my goodness, it's, it's good to be in Hutchinson. Kind of early, though. And, and little Brian, it's so good to see you. Well, I'm not so little anymore. Oh, boy, you, 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 yes. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm having such a good time. Say, Brian, you know, on my way over here to the uh, television studio, I, I, did you hear about the accident on Highway 15 and 7? No! Oh, yes, there was a, a tanker truck that tipped over, and all the contents spilled all over the road. And I, of course, I had to stop, and I asked one of the officers, I said, Officer, is there anything that Santa can do? And he said, oh, don't worry, Santa, we've got everything controlled. Oh, well, what happened here? Well, the tanker truck tipped over. It was full of hair restorer, escargot, and glue. Oh, but don't worry, we're combing the area for the driver right now, and traffic is is traveling at a snail's pace and everyone is sticking to their own lane. <gasps> <laughs> well, Brian is so nice. You know, I had to come down and see all the nice people in Hutchinson. Ooh, how'd you oh, get here? Well, I tell you, the reindeer are now vacationing in Florida right now. Oh. And I had to double park. I have a, I have a nice red truck and, uh, of course, uh, oh, it doesn't. It doesn't work really well because nope. I don't drive it that often. No, I, I, on the way over here, I went through two stoplights, two stop signs, almost hit a police officer. <laughs> and, uh, of course, I thought, I told the, uh, the mechanic some time back, uh, you know, why, uh, my truck isn't stopping. Can you fix my brakes? And see, you know, he tried to fix the brakes, and apparently he couldn't fix the brakes, but he made the horn louder. Ah! <laughs> Where's the horn? Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, let me see. Did I tell you, too, I'm here for a special reason. Uh, you see, it hasn't been good up at the North Pole lately. No. no, it hasn't been good. Eugene got himself in trouble again. He was working at the sausage-making factory and uh, had to fire him right on the spot. And do you know why, Brian, why I had to fire him on the spot? No! You don't? Well, no. I'm going to tell you. That's what yes. I'm here for. I had to fire him on the spot because he backed up into the sausage grinder and he got a little behind in his work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, so much going on. But you know, I could use a, I could use another elf. You look like, a, well, I could say that you are an elf with a pituitary problem, you know, and you're a little bit larger than the rest of the boys over there. But we've got to do something. I think I've got something. Well, that's something in here. I, let me ha take that hat off. I think I might have something in, in that to, to make it a little bit nicer. Now, I think this hat is you. I think, <laughs> oh, Brian, uh, now I see it. Now I see it. Oh, my goodness. Remember at Christmas time, I once gave you a comb, and I told you a comb is not a toy? Oh. Oh. Oh, well, anyway, but you know what's nice about giving a, a comb to a, a man that has no hair? He'll never part with it. That's right. Okay, I'm going to get a little closer here. We're going to put this on. Ooh, isn't this pretty? This is you. This is you. Okay, get that right on there. You might have to help Santa with that a little bit, okay? Oh, look, you pull it down. Oh, no. That is you. I'm like the Liberace of elves. Oh, goodness. Oh, wow. So, 
Well, you're probably wondering why I only have a glove on one hand. Yes. And I don't, you, why didn't you ask that? Doesn't well, that puzzle I just, you? Yeah, well, I was a little embarrassed. You were a little, well, listen, uh, before I came down here, I tuned in the weather station, and I said uh, I wanted to watch what the weather was like, and the weatherman said, well, on the one hand, tomorrow it might be warm, but on the other hand, it might be cold. So I got everything covered. Right? Zing! Getting better, getting better. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. So it's just so much going on. Let's see now. Let's see. I remember coming over to your house one time. Mm -hmm. I remember, and you were peeking on me. <laughs> and I remember last year when I came over to your house. This is what I had right here. La, 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 I found this. And they had such a pretty Christmas tree. Oh my goodness. And who's the, who's the smartest Christmas tree in the woods? Everyone knows it's Albert Pinestein. <laughs> oh, okay, now listen, this is what I, I I'm, I'm gonna try to do this without standing out, up out of my chair. So, so this is what I found, remember this from last year? <laughs> That's a pretty big stocking, Brian. Well, that's a pretty big feet. Really? Boy, I don't think you're that good. But anyway, so this year, I think Aww. I'm going to give you this right now to put up there because I've heard stories about you, and uh, it's pretty interesting. So I'll give that to you now, and we'll just put this one away for another time. Oh, boy. Thanks, So much Anna. going on. So let me ask you a question. Yes. Um, uh, uh, what do you call a cow that eats grass? A lawn mower. <laughs> <laughs> and did you hear about the cow that lost his calf? She was decaffeinated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't, I, I'm always thinking of toys and things to invest, you know, to uh, invent, right? I, right? I crossed a chicken with a guitar, you know what I got? I got, uh, well, I'm not really sure what I got, but it makes music when you pluck it. Oh. <laughs> and, then, and then, oh my goodness, so many things are, so many things are going on in the world here. Uh, how are things at the museum? Can you tell me that? Well, they're, they're, they're quite well. They are? They, they are quite well. I stopped there before I came here. I, I said, uh, I, I stopped at the museum. I talked to Peggy. I asked Peggy, say, Peggy, anything new? No, she said, at the museum, everything is old. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness, but I have a special event coming up though. Yes, at the you museum. Do. Yes, you do. So, last year for Christmas, for the first time ever, we held a great big Christmas event. Shortly after, a museum member who, who has been a volunteer in the past, but has been a member for years, and she's come to many, many of our events and she came up to me and she said, that was just awesome. You better do it again next year. Mm -hmm. I've never had that much fun here. Mm -hmm. And so it was great. So we wanted to do it again this year. Mm -hmm. And we're doing it very similar. We're going to have the Victorian carolers back. We are going to have the uh, Mid-Minnesota Concert Band back again. We're going to decorate again. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to dress like this. And then <laughs> also, uh, we are having... You! I'm coming! Oh, good! Yes, good. you're coming. And we're hoping to have lots of kids there for Oh, you. that's good. I yes. love the little children. That's what Christmas is all about, you know? Just it like is. the little Raymond story. It is. Raymond was very special to me. Very, very special. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that will be, and that is the 1st of December? That is correct. Thursday, December 1st at 6.30 p.m. The doors will open. It will go to 8 8.30, and I say both because I advertise both. But uh, it'll go to about 8, 8.30, mm -hmm. uh, basically when people filter out. Um, but should be a great, great night. We're also going to have a photographer on hand, a professional photographer, and she's going to be taking photos of any kids with Santa. Mm -hmm. And if mom, dad, grandma, aunts, uncles, anybody wants to bring the kids down, have their pictures taken, the pictures are actually free. Wow. She is going to, she, she's going to take the photos, she's going to upload them to her site, and anybody can download them for free. I tell you what, I think I've got a special guest I'd like to have come. Uh, come right over here, come right Ooh. over here. 
Oh, here we, now everyone's going to get to see who's been making. Come right over here and stand right over here. So your name is James, right, James? Yeah. Yes, and how old are you? Six. Six years old, wow. And what grade in school are you? First. First grade, how many years were you in kindergarten? All year until summer. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> and, and how many years are you planning to be in first grade? I have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> well, uh, little Brian, uh, this Brian guy over here, how many years were you in the second grade? Oh, Best three years of your life, right? Yes. That's Best right. Three, <laughs> Brian was in se uh, third grade three years, but it really wasn't his fault. You know why? Because he had Miss Pepper, and uh, as a young girl, she got kicked in the head by a cow, and it crossed her eyes. So she became a teacher and was teaching at school. She was Brian's third grade teacher, right? And of course, you know why he didn't learn anything there? Do you know why? Because her eyes were so crossed, she had no control over her pupils. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's right. And I, and Brian, I heard it, that through the Christmas letters, the reports, that your dad was an instigator. He gave Miss Schmepepper a nickname. And you know what he called her? Old Crosswalk Eyes. And you know why he called her Old Crosswalk Eyes? Because her eyes always look both ways before they cross. <laughs> <laughs> so now, if you could have one thing for Christmas, what would you like? Can you think right now? It's kind of tough because talking to Santa Claus right here. But can you think of one thing? I think I might know. Okay. The Slappy from Goosebumps. Okay. And you, have you, you haven't written to Santa Claus yet, have you? You haven't written. It's a little no. early yet. Well, maybe you can sit down with your mom and dad and write Santa a letter. I'm so glad I could see you here today. And for those people who are watching this, this was our chief engineer on the Noisemaker. Boy, he, he did a pretty good job, didn't he? Yeah, we just hire him under four feet. We are all, <laughs> I'm used to people your height, you know that? Let me see, what else can I ask you? Uh, okay, let's pretend that uh, your daddy is not in the room anymore and look at me and tell me something. Has he been a good boy this year? You're kind of looking, you're thinking awful hard. There's smoke coming out of your ears. <laughs> has, he, has he been good this year? I think so, right? I think so, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I think he's good. good. He was a good boy. All that one year he had, in third grade, he was a little trouble. But then after that, well, listen, I'll try to bring something special to you for Christmas, okay? You love Santa Claus, don't you? I love you, too. You know that. You know that. And would you leave some cookies and milk if I come to your house? Do you have any animals at your house? Dog. Oh, you have a dog. What's your dog's name? Daisy. Daisy? Is it a girl dog? Yeah. Okay. I have a dog named Fritz. Fritz, and he is a, a dachshund. He's a dachshund, you know, that long dog, and I bring him over to Canterbury uh, to race in the dachshund races. Every year I come all the way from the North Pole to go down to Minnesota, and he races. And every time Fritz races, he always wins. And you know what he says when he comes across the finish line? What? I'm a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> So nice that you invited me here oh, today. Thank you. And it is special mm -hmm. to remember some of these people, the, the story and little Raymond, and now I get a chance to see you all growing up. Mm -hmm. Looks like you've done pretty good with your life so have. far. I have. Thank you very much. Good. And you look wonderful in tights, right? I'm sure you're going to get a lot of letters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> enough is enough. Merry Christmas. Thank you, everybody, for watching our, our episode of History Quest this month. It's been a... Uh, wonderful episode to film. Actually, I think this has been one of my most fun episodes since I've been doing this, and it's going on four years now, so, and just so you know, I can count up to four. Um, but at any rate, uh, great episode. Um, I hope you tune in again next month for a, another exciting episode, and also, I hope to see everybody watching this at the museum on Thursday, December 1st at 6.30 p.m. for our big Christmas event, and if you've got kids, Bring them on in because we have got the real Santa from Hutchinson. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next month. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! 
Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh.